Um, ben Moore is the general manager um, of research at the Kandinan Group in Western Australia. Ben is an agriculture engineer, um, Kandinan Group's research manager and editor of Farming Ahead magazine, and a member of the GRDC stored grain extension team. Based in Western Australia, Ben comes from a family farm in the New England region of Northern New South Wales. Since completing his engineering studies at the University of Southern Queensland, Toowoomba, he's worked for Condinan Group for 20 years. Ben has extensive experience in reviewing and communicating a wide range of innovations and technologies, including in the livestock ag tech field. Ben has conducted a review of a wide range of commercially available sheep handlers and will explain his findings here today. He'll also talk about the key things to consider when setting up a new set of sheep or cattle yards. So thank you, Ben. Thank you, Emily. Fantastic. Um, I, I've got a pretty good job, I have to say. I'm pretty lucky to be able to uh, review a whole heap of gear, and that can be anything from mobile phones to sheep handlers to harvesters. So um, if there's anything else you want to chat to me about, um, after talk, happy to talk about that as well. Um, if, uh, if you aren't familiar with Condinan Group or what we do, you might have heard of Choice Magazine. We're a little bit like Choice Magazine in that we do independent reviews of, uh, of equipment and services and tech. Um, and in the past couple of years, uh, we've had a, quite, a, quite a, uh, a demand from our membership uh, to do some, a, a lot of work on, on sheep handling gear and just have a look at what's in the market and put some sheep through it and see how it goes. So uh, we have done three reports uh, in the last few years. And uh, focusing uh, on, on, the, on the single um, animal handling gear and then right through to, uh, we also had a look at, at bulk handlers uh, last year as well. So what I'm gonna do is just run through, thanks Joe. What I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is run through some of the findings from that. Um, but just before I do, I'd just be interested to know who is using a sheep handler on farm at the moment? A few? Oh, it's more than I expected. What have we got? Just yell out the names. What, what brands? Yeah. Tatari. Copy plant. Big Hill. Big Hill. Big Rose. What was that one? Oh, I have, I've <laughs> done the sweep. I don't really need to talk to you blokes. Just get amongst yourselves and have a bit of a yarn. <laughs> all right. So there is a fair few out there. Um, look, what we did is we, we got them all into the same set of yards and we put, uh, put some sheep through them. Um, we worked with, uh, you know, as a lowly engineer, um, might, while I might have come off a uh, sheep cattle property in the New England, um, we wanted guys there that, uh, that handled sheep every single day. So we did, uh, we, we got um, some, some really good producers uh, on a farm in WA uh, and we put sheep through each, each of these, uh, these different, different handlers. Uh, we repeated the test a number of times and ended up with some average uh, times. We also did an evaluation on build quality, maintenance, ease of operation and adjustability. Um, so yep, some of those, uh, some of those measures are, uh, are subjective and they're things that we've come up with uh, as engineers and also had input from producers uh, as to what they, they thought of each of those uh, different makes and models of handler. Now, You'll see that um, the bulk handlers aren't in there. I'll talk about them separately later on. Uh, but we haven't we haven't done this level of testing with those. Uh, there are some other handlers that aren't obviously in that list as well. Um, so as I say, we try and keep these things updated. But the second you publish something, it's out of date. Uh, that's something we've learned pretty quickly, particularly uh, when we're talking about technology. But even just uh, sheep handlers, you know, there's, there's always makes and models and adjustments and changes that manufacturers are, are continually making. Uh, so yeah, uh, Hecton, um, we've got, also got the Dan Darrigan, uh, the Perkins, uh, Drenchmaster, et cetera, uh, from NZ. So there's a few other makes and models that aren't included. So I'm just gonna run through each of the, of the models and just talk about the things we did and didn't like about each of them. Uh, and if you've got one of these, feel free to yell out. I'd love to hear if you've got any uh, comments or suggestions that, that you think we've missed here, I'd love to hear. Um, so we'll start off with the ClipX, um, what we liked provided pretty good access to the sheep. Um, there's an air outlet on, the, on that unit for, um, uh, for any accessories. Auto release uh, when, you, when you write the animal. 
Uh, what could be better? Um, certainly in WA, uh, there's some distribution issues. I, I'm not, I can't speak for SA, but um, uh, probably talk to those that have got them to, to get a bit of a feel of what service and backup is like. And I think that it's an important point to make that service and backup for, the, for, for something that's relatively technical, like if you open the bottom of this thing up, there's a huge electronic brain in there that uh, you know, controls, the whole, the, controls the whole show. Occasionally, you know, think about where that, the environment that's working in, you're going to have issues from time to time, right? So you need that support and backup. So that's important. Uh, and in that same sense, pre-delivery was, was required some improvement. Again, that's probably a reflection of what, what we had in WA. And I only say that because we had to get into that brain box, uh, crawling in there with bloody some screwdrivers in the middle of the yards. It wasn't much fun. So uh, a couple of issues there. Uh, and as I mentioned there, the initial access to the control box, you, yeah, I had to actually, uh, yeah, uh, we nearly had to enlist a 14-year-old uh, kid from down the road because he, he was the only one who had arms small enough to get in there. <laughs> right, but you know, what's well, what works well on the, on the Clipex is the control panel is really well laid out and it's well labelled. You can see what's going on, uh, you know, toggle switches uh, and there's a bit of a shift uh, to, to toggles um, with, uh, with a lot of these handlers, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, combi clamp, there was a couple, was a, who were over here had a combi clamp, yep. A um, couple of things here uh, that, that we particularly liked and it's already been discussed, I think Nathan might have mentioned it earlier, uh, we found this unit particularly quiet and I think that's a good thing in, in yards, just keep, um, keeps animals moving, they don't, there's not a lot of, of noise. Um, uh, no power required obviously, because um, so it's, it's actuated by the operator's weight. Uh, and, and in all, it's relatively clever. It's basic. Good engineering is, is simple engineering. It's something that's really, um, that's basic, that it works well. Um, at the end of the day, it probably needs two people. Someone to, to push sheep up into, you know, into, the, uh, into the unit um, so you don't have to continually walk backwards and forwards. Um, and a couple of the cut sections, I think, probably could be better finished off just in terms of the caps are a little bit open. Um, potentially could, uh, could cause some injury to, to operate or animal. Combi clamp owners, have, have I covered anything else there that we need? About right? Nods? Yep. Gallagher crutch and deck. Anyone? Did anyone have that? Is anyone here with a Gallagher unit? No. All right. Um, Look, in terms of, of construction, very robust. Um, GAL, lots of, lots of components hot dipped. Um, it is pretty simple in its operation. Easy to clean down, so there's a reasonable focus on, on cleaning and, and, and transporting. So uh, in terms of access, you could definitely get in around the animal. That top cylinder did obstruct the operation, or the operator a little bit, uh, just in the way that that, uh, that, that, that top cylinder operates. Um, really need two people to set it up. Um, some components are a little bit heavy, uh, not that well balanced, uh, and the release isn't automated when tipping, back, tipping the animal back upright. And I imagine that would be something that could be probably pretty easily fixed. Peak Hill, there was a couple of Peak Hill owners, wasn't there? Yep. Yeah. Good access, um, pretty well built. Uh, easy to, uh, there's a lot of adjustments on that machine. Do you find that as well? Yep. Yeah. Um, we found the balk gate uh, the, at the back of the, uh, of the handler uh, did sort of allow animals to push through a little bit. So when you're rotating that next animal through the, uh, through the handler, it did, did catch the, the head every now and again. Would that be a fair comment? Yep, a couple of nods. Good. Good to know. It's good to, good to know that we are, we do get some things right sometimes. Um, yeah, it, look, in all, it's, it's pretty clever construction, this, this, uh, this handler, and I think uh, there's been a fair bit of thought going to it. So, um, yeah, good unit. Uh, and again, the immobiliser. So we're moving now from the, the, from the individual animal uh, operations. I should just back up one and make one point. Those last three handles, obviously, uh, we're talking about lifting and tipping the animals, you know, so you can actually get access to them. Uh, something like the immobiliser uh, keeps the animal, and, and, and the combi clamp for that matter, keeps the animal in that upright position. So you, you're kind of limited into, uh, as to some of, the, uh, some of the operations you can perform with some of these handlers. So it really depends what you want to use it for. Um, you know, drenching shape upside down uh, in something like, like the, uh, the peak hill handle is probably not something I'd recommend. Certainly not best, best practice. So uh, the immobiliser, simple to use. Um, again, quite neat, uh, neat construction. Uh, symmetry of controls, for, so 
left and right hand um, controls on this unit. Uh, getting that rear gate to operate uh, does require some coordination. Uh, Josh, our other engineer, uh, he's not, not blessed particularly with coordination, poor old Josh-o. Uh, so it took him about half a day to get that right. Um, uh, there is a mount pole for overhead gear, that can get in the way a little bit, but of course that's all something that's pretty easily adjusted. Uh, wheels just too small and difficult to get in and out of the yard. So, you know, and what, what tends to happen is that, you know, you either discard those wheels and put something on that works uh, a bit better, or, you know, you just bring the front and loader into the yards if you can get it in there and fork it out. Uh, Tapari HD4, now, strictly speaking, we're talking more about uh, draft here, but I, I suppose um, I just wanted to make a point that uh, I mentioned before the toggles, these guys have gone to rotary switches because they think they're uh, a little bit more simple to use. Uh, there's a fast drench mode, um, there's new radio remote um, so you can control the, uh, control the handler from down the back so if you're pushing sheep up. Um, I think the, one, of the, one of the points I want to make is that any of these handlers uh, only operate as well as the, as the, as the race, or the lead up race into them, okay? Absolutely essential. Now, all the, all the work that we did um, with those times that I showed you at the start of the talk, um, that was all done with the same lead up race, okay? So getting that right is essential in making any of these systems work, really important. Okay. All right, so we'll just move into the bulk handlers, uh, I'm just conscious of time. So, uh, obviously two main ones out there, the Proway, which is available in um, six or 12 metre, uh, six metres also available in transportable uh, in a transportable model. Um, hydraulic lift. Uh, so if you're out in the middle of nowhere, like this this unit set up, typically a um, hydraulic power pack and a, and a, uh, a gen set to run that hydraulic power pack is required. Um, rel relatively simple, well built, well finished. Lots of hot dip gal. Um, and uh, of course you're elevating an entire race full of, of, of sheep with this unit. Um, this lady here handles, uh, I think it's about 10 or 12,000 sheep herself, like just by herself every year with this unit. Hooks it up to the trailer, carts it around, can't speak more highly of it, loves it. And the reason she did that is because she was handling some pretty big weathers in the race, you know how we get in the race, you know? Not a good idea, is it? One jumps up, smashed a jaw. She was in hospital for six weeks having a complete jaw reconstruction. And uh, so that was the impetus to, to spend the money on, on this. The other one is the, um, the Murray, uh, built by DE engineers again in WA. Um, I think one of the things farmers like about this is a little bit cheaper, I can't remember the exact price, but, but they're not afraid to go ahead and weld stuff on, you know, make adjustments, change things, put an extra tap at the end so you can, uh, you can, you can uh, release the air from either end, okay? Pretty, pretty basic sort of uh, setup. Um, uses a tyre <laughs> to, uh, to inflate and, and, lift the, and, and lift the sheep in the, in the race. There's a couple of um, cradles, as you can see, that run the length of the, of the race. If you've got small lambs or sheep off shears like this, they probably should have had those inserts in because they make that, that V a little bit narrower. Um, lots of mods to this one in the in the lead up. So the the uh, there's a, you, know, you can see it's quite high off the ground. So a lot of grow, a lot of growers uh, will put uh, or producers will put uh, a ramp leading up into the into this unit and and uh, just to aid the flow. Uh, additional taps um, and it does require a fair bit of air. You might have seen that first photo. Uh, there's a large uh, gas cylinder there that's used as a receiver for the. Uh, uh, for the uh, compressed air, so the compressor's up the paddock somewhere, um, but yeah, they, they ended up using a fair bit of air, so needed a quite a large receiver to, to keep that operating. Oh no, so that's, uh, that's all I had for handlers, and we're well, happy to take more questions um, down the track, but I thought I'd just move quickly on to, on to uh, sheep yard design, and I thought I'd just run through uh, some, of the, uh, some of the considerations you might want to uh, put into play if you're gonna make an investment into, into yards. Uh, I suppose the first one is just planning and design, making sure that you've got the yards in the right spot, make sure that you've got some uh, decent slopes and decent drainage that's going to tie in with existing infrastructure that you might have there. Think about where the prevailing winds come from, think about where shadows are going to fall in your race, etc. if you haven't got it covered. Um, at the end of the day, these are a long-term investment, okay? So it's not like if you buy a dud tractor, you can send it back and buy something else. It's pretty hard to trade yards in. And in most cases, uh, 
you got to pull them out yourself as well, which can be equally frustrating as putting them in and not getting a good, getting a good job in the first place. Uh, so spend that money once. And, and I suppose the other thing I, I wanted to point out is that you can always build them in stages and just think about where your, where your end game is for, for your yards uh, and that infrastructure and think about the stages you might want to get to to do that. You don't have to make that investment all in, all in one hit. Um, Use quality steel. I've seen some really cheap steel uh, used in yards that, that's had all the gal blister off it and uh, and or hasn't you know hasn't fared well in the weather. Um, check sec section thickness. Uh, in some cases, uh, cheap steel is cheap for a reason. Um, that K rail or similar that site form panel is becoming really popular. So I don't know if you've got uh, any locals here that, that do that, but that's uh, a pretty quick way to put up a set of yards, and then they normally roll it out and charge you by the meter. <coughs> Uh, and the beauty about that, that is you can have lengths up to, well, any length you like, really. I saw some in WA the other day, 25 metre long strips, you know, no joins. Um, curves and races, the bugle design is still king, but we're seeing a lot of these diamonds now in yards. Um, just being able to shift sheep from one pen to any other, just through the diamonds, is a really popular design. Who's installed a set of yards recently? Yeah. Does it have a diamond in it? Yep, nearly everyone. So it's just that's that's one of the, I guess, one of the uh, emerging trends. Dual races are popular. Uh, vertical bars on the end gates just to, uh, to assist flow in, into the race. Um, undercover. Whose yards are undercover? Man, a lot. I tell you what. Once you work in a set of undercover yards, you don't want to go back out in the sun. Um, it just makes life a lot, lot more simple. There are some, some, um, some issues. Um, dust can be, a, can be a problem, so uh, our yards are all undercover at home. Uh, we just put down water uh, before we go out and muster, and then um, by the time uh, that's sort of settled down a little bit, there's just no dust in the yards. It makes life a lot easier. Um, even if you just consider covering the, the most used parts of the yard, whether that's the race or the area where you've got the handler, definitely something worth thinking about. Um, latches and catches, there's heaps of options now, and God, I've seen some crazy designs. Um, but, uh, you know, top mount latches, double latches, there's, there's uh, you know, I think, you know, anyone that's got a, a fancy latch that is easy to open, probably might be easy for sheep to open too, so they've all got a, always got a secondary chain sort of latch there as well. Um, and PA gates, uh, I think if you're designing a set of yards, you just can't have too many of them. They make life so much easier and you're not as buggered by the end of the day when you've done a day's work in the yards. Um, lots of manufacturers who make the PA gates are all also putting in um, dog flaps in the bottom of those gates. Just, again, dogs aren't as buggered at the end of the day jumping over or crawling under fences. And, you know, we want to look after their legs as well. Power and water. Um, think about location in terms of... Uh, of power and water, you're going to need those things if you're going to put, um, and air for that matter, if you're going to put uh, handlers in there or pretty much anything these days, you're going to need power on site, um, whether it's panel readers. I mean, yep, sure, you can get away with the gen set. I've seen a couple of setups that were solar, uh, which were interesting. Um, but the other thing I've just made a point there is we were talking about uh, compressors before and having a large receiver to handle the volume of air required for some handlers. In a lot of cases, if you want to put that noisy compressor miles away and you've got power there, a, a decent length of pipe uh, from that compressor uh, down to the yards um, will often do the job of the receiver. So there's a reasonable volume of air, I suppose, stored in that pipe, if you like. So that can be a good thing. Um, think about uh, flooring, high traffic areas. Concreted, toe recesses in underneath the race help you get in nice and close if you're bending in over. Uh, and think about maybe adding some, some concrete uh, to, uh, to your gravel base uh, in throughout the yards. Uh, I think it's about one bag of cement to every three square metres is the general ratio. But geez, it makes the yards easy to clean out. Loading ramps, there is a standard being developed uh, off the basis of these guidelines. Um, uh, examples, you know, this is probably top of the water down here, the, the Proway set up, but I suppose the point is that there are some standards emerging and if you are going to put uh, loading ramps in uh, out of your yards and you, you're going to make that investment, again, refer back to that standard because there's some specifics there that will keep uh, truck drivers safe and just make life a lot easier when you're trying to load sheep or cattle.
Uh, installations, you know, ultimately we've talked a lot about the, de the design and the construction and the, fabric the fabrication and, and, and all of that's really important, but if installation's no good, then, you know, you waste a lot of money. So if you're going to do the yards yourself, well, you've only got yourself to blame if it's not a good install, do you? But if you're going to get a, a contractor and a lot of, um, if, you, if you buy a set of yards, a lot of manufacturers will use a contractor to install, just go and have a look at some other work they've done previously before you make the call as to whether you want to use them or we use the contractor or we use that, that yard manufacturer. Um, it is a big investment. Uh, in a lot of cases now, they use some pretty high-end surveying gear to lay out posts. Um, it does make the, the installation a lot quicker uh, and also a lot more accurate. Um, I thought I'd just touch on cattle yards as well. Uh, so a couple of interesting designs. Uh, this one uh, in New South Wales, again, Karen Palmerino, so they've got a, a fair uh, mention today, but um, interesting design with a central uh, laneway um, in this particular set of yards. Again, all the, the high usage areas are under cover. That's for, so the race is there, the handle, the crush is there, etc. Uh, and in the same way that we had the diamond design uh, in sheep yards, uh, this hex hexagonal yard in the centre, which I thought was interesting. Bit of a layout there, plans, gives you a rough idea of the, um, of the areas involved. So the other part of it is obviously the, the heart of any yards is the, is the, is the crush. Um, I suppose just a couple of things to run through. There's a few dot points there on safety, just making sure that uh, access is, is safe for all operators, um, that you've also, you're not gonna scone yourself if you are in that, back in that uh, vet area. Um, noise is something we've talked about already in the, in the context of sheep handlers. It's important in crushes as well if you want to be able to uh, have low stress uh, operations through, through a set of yards. Um, animal welfare, always high on the list. Uh, and ease of use, I have to stress, stress can be a personal preference. So go and have a look at them, make sure you know how everything works, get comfortable with it. Uh, and in some cases, you know, things like latches, um, head mail actions, it'll all come down to what you prefer to use. And that can be a little bit tricky if you're going to if you're going to buy some uh, off a field day site, but if you can find one that are out on a set of yards and you can, you know, there are some cattle running through it, you get a feel for how how well it works. Um, construction. One of the big issues that I've seen lately is uh, is some of the cheaper imported crushes. Um, quality is lacking, let's just say. Um, some of the welds have got inclusions in them. Some of the finish is pretty average. Some of the uh, hot dip gal is not good quality. Um, to keep an eye out for all of these things. Um, I mentioned Josh, the other engineer for Condinian Group, bought a, a crush from an, a manufacturer I won't name, but it was imported. And uh, I think he's repaired the head bale five times since he's had it. He only had it for 12 months. Not good. So just make sure that the, the quality of materials is, uh, is, uh, is where it's supposed to be at. Make sure that you know, you're comfortable with the, with the build quality. Um, and that, again, we talked about um, backup and, and service and make sure that you know, if you do, are gonna need parts, you can get a hold of those. All the, all the basic stuff, you know, grease nipples, make sure that servicing is gonna be pretty easy. Um, there are a lot of moving parts on a crush, make sure that you can access each of those and service them. Um, and think about future tech, you know, just integration of that tech that you might want to put on the crush. You might want to be upgraded later on to air, there might be kits for that. Um, and, and also, obviously, the EID side of things, just make sure that yeah, all that can be integrated. Alrighty, that's a whole lot of information I've just thrown at you there in, in a short amount of time. Um, if you aren't a Condition Group member and you want to sign up, there's a discount code there. I just rang through to the office because I couldn't make it work. Uh, but they told me that'll give you... Uh, uh, they're onto it. They tell me that'll give you 20% off. So um, jot that down if you aren't a member. But um, yeah, I'm happy to take any questions from the floor. Uh, just after any tips for the lead ups to your yep. handlers? Yeah, for sure. So the lead ups um, curves the whole way. Try and try and keep everything curved. In fact, some of the manufacturers of the, of the, um, of the handlers also supply lead up races, and some will go through a full 180 degrees, which is full curve. Um, again, blind panels on the outer, just so that you can, animals will, will continue to follow that through. Hock bars, if you like them. Um, some like the, the Peak Hill unit comes with a, with a straight race, but it's, it's got hock bars and, and they're um, uh, weight actuated, so as the animal comes on that, they pop out. Um, I think the main thing is just, yeah, keep, keeping it blind, 
uh, and curved so that animals will continue to follow animals. So once you get that flow going, uh, you, you're away. The other thing, good thing about the 180 degree is that in most cases, if you've got the handler sort of here, uh, you know, and, and, the, and the race is coming around behind you, you can always walk over and, and push a few up if, you know, if, uh, if there's some help required there. And of course, you're yeah, always walking up too. So, you know, don't put that lead up race facing downhill. You just won't get flow. Have you had a look at the backup Charlies yet or not? Yep, I have, yeah. Yeah, great design. So we saw that, uh, I think, at a field day in um, Henty, I reckon it was. A couple of years ago, they won, uh, won the, one of the awards there for best new release. We haven't put any sheep through it. Um, so COVID's blown a, a fair hole in our research program and being able to get around and, and test a lot of things. Uh, but it's definitely one, one of the units we'd be keen to, to do some more work on. But look, the, the animals we saw running through it at the field day looked like it was working quite well. So Ben, you haven't mentioned the um, V handlers or the V Express or yeah. the two belts. No, that's a good point. I haven't, um, but, and, they're, and they're a pretty, uh, pretty important part of. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of people use those, uh, particularly for, for drenching and, and um, uh, whatever it may well be. Any any head work you've got to do on the animals at all, and they are pretty popular. Um, I suppose one of the things that uh, is important with those is just make sure that you can vary the speed. And there's a couple of models out there that where the speed's not variable, and um, depending on what you're doing, um, that can make life a bit tricky. So, uh, but in all the, the designs are pretty simple and all pretty much the same. So, but again, yeah, no, look, they're, they're definitely a, um, a contender if you if you use them and, and you're happy with them. Um, sounds good. We've got a need to uh, do the feet on a big door for rams and ewes. Um, been battling to find one that's not a huge amount of money. Uh, would you know to have you used the arrow or and then do yeah, that? We used the arrow in that one of the initial tests we did. Um, I, I don't think it would be up to it to be honest. Um, wasn't a lot of adjustment uh, in that particular unit. Um, it was pretty basic. Uh, again, this is going back three years. That, that's the that's, you know unless anything's changed, and it may well have changed since then. Uh, but you know, I'm probably not a contender in terms of what else is out there. That's a pretty good question. I mean, there are. Uh, I think <laughs> trying to find a, a handle that's got plenty of adjustment for for size for a range of sizes is always hard, isn't it? Because there'll be compromises uh, on either design simplicity or uh, you know, the ease of use. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, depending how big we're going to go, um, you know, there, there's there's handles out there that'll that'll handle rams for shearing. So. You know, there's, there's, probably, there's probably one line to look at. Um, you briefly spoke about um, having yards under cover, which would be ideal. Um, we're sort of planning some new sheep yards and thinking about park cover, because um, sometimes the cover itself costs more than the yard. So any lessons learned about park cover with, you know, shade and shadows and stuff? Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, so making sure that um, if you... If, <laughs> I mentioned that, you know, if you aren't going to cover all the yards, just cover the sections you work in pretty regularly. Um, you're right. If you can can trip yourself up with you know with uh, sun coming in particular directions and throwing shadows down the race that might bulk sheep moving up through it. Uh, I think um, uh, going wider than than you probably need probably should uh, probably take care of that issue. Uh, so just make sure you've got plenty of, of coverage. Um, but again, it all comes down to cost at the end of the day too, doesn't it? So. Um, and I suppose the only other great thing about the the, uh, the 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 undercover yards is you can also illuminate them really well as well. So if you do need to, you know, do some some work, you know, into the evening, you know, whatever happens, it's not ideal, but sometimes it happens. Um, you've at least got uh, some lighting there to either, even if that's just cleaning out the yards or whatever it may well be, um, you know, integrating that lighting. And as I mentioned, we've we've got all our sprinklers mounted in the in the roof, uh, which works pretty well, Don't, nothing gets chewed off or, or torn apart. Uh, that tends to work quite well. But yeah, I suppose in terms of scale, yeah, going out wider to, to avoid that shadow issue is definitely a good idea. Thank you very much. Can I get you all to join me in thanking Ben?